everybody, a warm welcome to Wisdom from North. I'm Yannicka and today I'm here with Zachariah Bourne. Zachariah is a producer, a songwriter and an artist. He calls himself a personal developer and a positive enthusiast. I love that. He writes articles for HuffPost and Addicted to, Addicted to Success and he has a huge following on Instagram. He's also on YouTube and now he's writing his first book. That's called the most important skill. Hello, yes. Zachariah. How are you doing Hi. today? I'm doing fantastic. I'm very happy to be here. I'm excited about it too. I've been reading some of your uh, articles and they're very inspiring. Yeah. And I've been oh, watching some of your uh, videos on YouTube and on Instagram. And I'm glad I discovered you. Um, Perfect. Yeah. Uh, and mm -hmm. today uh, we talked a little bit about what to speak about and you suggested mm -hmm. speaking about the mindset, like how, how we can yes. change our thoughts uh, in order to create harmonic path uh, or patterns. Yes. And that is so important. Uh, thinking is such a big part of our lives. And what I've learned is that the thought comes before the feeling. And we of have course. emotions, you know, all the time. So it means that the thought starts everything. <laughs> it does. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yes. yeah. So I read somewhere that you said, I'm going to start with that, that you said you cannot create beyond images you hold in your mind. That's and true. I was like, that is interesting. I want to ask about that. So, so can you tell us what do you put into that? Well, uh, absolutely. And that's kind of an interesting thing people don't always realize is everything starts the thought. Uh, if we look around us where we are right now, everything around us was once a thought in the mind of a person. So your, your cabinet was a thought originally, the building you're in right now, the, uh, the city you're in was originally a thought. Even, even whole countries were originally the thought, just a whisper of a thought in the mind of one person. And so if we realize that thoughts are really an important thing and that learning how to think is such an incredible, um, can have such a positive benefit in our lives, um, that so it's really important that we learn kind of how to navigate that. So how do we learn that? How do so how, we do it? <laughs> of course, of course. Well, that's definitely a big, it's a big topic. So let's dive into it. Like, I, you know, it. many, many teachers say it's so important to love yourself. It's so important yeah. to love yourself. And yeah. when I hear like videos where they don't tell me how, you know, how? especially right. in the beginning, I was like, okay, I get right. that it's important. And then the video right. ends and I'm like, but how do I do it? But now I've learned, right. you know, luckily so many tools, but uh, yeah, let's dive into your perspectives on actually how to think. Uh, right. Yeah, of course. Okay. So at any given moment, we have a full spectrum of thoughts that we can choose from. Right. We can think about what's going to happen later in the day. We can think about what's going on right in front of us. Um, we can think about something from our past that bothered us. You can think about, you know, an artist that you like. You can think about anything. And so the the interesting thing is most people aren't deliberately choosing their thoughts. They're just they're just going about their day and they're looking at at what's in front of them and what's happening to them, and then letting their thoughts just completely be around about what's right in front of you. And that doesn't help, that doesn't really help people very much, because you end up just creating the same things over and over. You observe it, you feel it, and then you're creating it again. And so, so it's really important that we can uncouple that. And the, um, the implications or we haven't even scratched the surface of what we can do. You can be in the same place doing the same things and have a completely different thing going on in your mind. And when you can do that, it's super powerful. You can change your life in, people don't even know how much you can change your life, how radical this is. Not one human, I think, has really pushed the boundaries of what you can do with your thoughts. So, yeah, I think it's, it's very important. Let me just ask, because you said yeah. that we uh, 
only think about usually things that are right in front of us but isn't yeah. that what we're told to do through mindfulness you know <sighs> yes yes well well i i suppose there's a difference of being present and being on autopilot because when you're mindful you're thinking about what's around you but you're doing it in a connected way you're doing it in an aligned way you're being present to where you are and often when we're just observing things that happen to us we're noticing the bad things in our life when we're dwelling on them or hanging on to them but instead we don't have to focus on them and so if you can and this is really how you how you change it a lot of your emotions, what people don't realize, is your emotions are, um, they're like a ladder. So a, ladder. a lot of people, they're like a ladder. And um, I'll explain why. So emotions and thoughts are something that I'm really passionate about and something I've explored a lot over the past 13 years and really gotten to, uh, uh, deep into how it all works. So... A lot of times people will try to make too big of a jump and because it's a ladder you can't really jump you just have to keep going up and and so say you're say you're not feeling so good right if you are depressed for instance you're not gonna be able to go from depressed to happy and that's what people try to do they try to make that jump and it's it's a it's a gigantic chasm and they're unable to do it but if you can um, be where you are and choose the best feeling thought from where you are um, and you can just feel 1% better every minute. And I think most people think, well, I could feel 1% better every minute. I mean, that's pretty reasonable. Even if it's 1% better every five minutes, if you continue to keep going, if you feel 1% better every minute in two hours, how you're going to be, you're going to be feeling over 100% better. And, and that's, that's what's really cool about this is if you just keep climbing up, if you keep choosing the best feeling thought from where you are, if you keep raising the bar of, of the thoughts mm -hmm. that you can choose, um, you, you can always get there. And so you just have to be patient and honest with yourself and where you are. Uh, because sometimes the best feeling thought is an angry thought, right? Mm -hmm. if, if you feel scared, an angry thought will feel a little bit better. And so, but you don't want to stay there. You have to keep going up. You have to keep going up. And uh, everyone can do this. Uh, I remember when I first started with this, I was the most probably depressed person I knew. And, um, and I really just let my thoughts dwell on crappy things all the time. And I didn't realize that I had control over my thoughts. And I, I didn't realize, actually, I used to think my emotions just kind of got in the way. They were just this like thing, like, why do I have this thing just dragging me down? It's just holding me back. But I, uh, I didn't realize that my emotions really are my best friend. They're my guidance. They help you to get to where you want to be. So slowly I, I started getting better at choosing the better feeling thought. And, you know, I go up and I go down and I go up and I go down. But in general, I just kept going up. And now I'm the happiest person I know and everyone can do it. You know, it's not something special to me. It's just I learned the technique and happiness is a skill and the way you think is a skill. And uh, it's 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 the best one you can have, really. Very interesting. Wow. There were many things there that I wanted to ask about. Yeah, uh, please. And there were many interesting views here. Uh, I, I like this thought. This was a bit new to yeah. me. I think I've heard it before, but it was like, it's a long time since I've heard about that uh, because I, I am very interested in thoughts and I think oh, there are many, uh, very many meanings and no, not meanings, uh, opinions, I mean, <laughs> and perspectives on this. Um, we all uh, or many of us know this positive thinking thing, you know, yeah. uh, that everybody spoke about for a, a while ago. Uh, and then the shadow work came, you know, you were going to right. go into your shadow and there was like, but that doesn't work either like you cannot, <laughs> cannot only go into the yeah the, yeah. the darkness uh, so I like your approach like uh, whatever you can do to just feel a little bit better and that's it that it's a ladder so uh, how in that technique would you meet yourself not um, putting 
uh, the sadness or whatever is the reason why you're depressed mm -hmm. under the carpet? How would you like right. to acknowledge it? Well, yeah, I think I think that's really good. And I, I think a lot of people, especially when it comes to, to happiness, they worry that they're going to be, you know, end up as like one of these chipper people who you can feel it's not genuine. And um, that's not really what I'm talking about. I'm only talking about the genuine happiness, you know, the real the real stuff. Um, and uh, so so um, if if your emotions are they really are your best friend, you really have to stay connected with them and you definitely shouldn't sweep things on the carpet. They always have a message for you. Your emotions have a message for you. And so when you're thinking about somebody and not feeling good, you, you have to know that that's not, um, it's not serving you to think that way. There's a better way to think about the situation you're in. And you can think about any situation from a positive place, no matter how bad or crazy it, it sounds. There's always a way. Um, and, and learning how to find those is really important. So you definitely always want to receive your message. Um, it, it, if there's an emotion, it's trying to tell you something. Uh, it's just an indicator. Emotions are just an indicator um, of what you're thinking and if it serves you or if it doesn't. So receive the message and then take, you know, try, to, try to aim back toward the positive. And you just want to keep moving in that direction. Because our, our emotions really aren't about what's going on around us, and often we think they are, but it actually is not about what's going on around us. It's what we think about what's going on around us. And because you can always change the way you think, there's always a way to see it from a positive view. Mm. Yeah. Um, I'm still wondering how much we can choose our thoughts. I, I think we can to a degree, or this is mm -hmm. where I am right now. Uh, um, right. Yeah, that I feel like thoughts just fall into my head sometimes. Mm -hmm. And but I don't have to engage in them. All of a sudden, That's I can true. get the negative thoughts about a person, uh, right. and I'm like uh, catching it. And I'm like, yes, well, but that, I that's don't really agree. Important. That's really yeah. good. That's really good. Okay, so so yes, and that that brings us to another really important thing, and and that has to do with um, if you drop a thought before it gets any um, amplitude. Okay, so here's here's another thing, and a lot of people really don't. You know, so many people don't uh, understand. That, that's why this is really good. So as you think a thought, if you continue to think it, it gains an amplitude, right? So first you have a thought, and then it expands, if you keep thinking it, to an emotion. And that emotion keeps growing stronger, positive or negative. Positive or negative. So it keeps growing stronger. And as you continue to think that thought, it increases in loudness in your brain you know, in your mind, uh, in your consciousness, right? So, and it continues, and if it grows and grows and grows, it becomes action, right? It becomes, it, be, it fleshes out into something real, eventually. Um, and so, what you want to do is, is because everybody, you're always going to have negative thoughts. I'm not saying you're not going to. Um, the trick is to not to hang on to them. If you can drop them within the first, you know, 10 seconds, and that's such a good key. It's so it's 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 such a vital thing. If you can just drop drop, you have like a negative thought. You're like, wow, ooh, I'm thinking about something not so good. All of a sudden, you can feel it. And if you can drop it before it really gets going, it doesn't have any real power. Right, because when you yeah. do think about it again and again, it can become a belief system. Exactly. And that's the thing. And belief system. Yeah, right. If it keeps growing and growing, it becomes a belief system. Exactly. It becomes a mental framework. And then right. it, it colors your vision of the reality around you. Right. Um, right. And so um, and then it and becomes so, the story. <laughs> right. 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 And then you have blackout spots. You can't even see where that's not the case. Yeah. 
Yeah, and so so it's really important to drop it within those first 10 seconds. That's something that has really changed my life, and I definitely recommend that for everyone. Yeah, and uh, it's such uh, a complex thing with thoughts, uh, because like yeah. I said, when I get this negative thought about a person, I'm like, what? I don't even agree with that. This person is right. totally fine. I like this person. <laughs> well, who is this? Uh -huh. And then I, I think Where did this come from, right? Yes, yeah. that we are affected by a lot of things that our thoughts mm -hmm. aren't always our own. Um, yeah. I, I, yeah, and sometimes I can get inspired thoughts, you know, which I don't mm -hmm. think comes from my ego. Or yeah. like telepathic communication, like I was sitting on the bus today and I was like, mm -hmm. such a long time since I talked to my friend Camilla. Uh -huh. right. And I wonder how she's doing. And then, you know, five minutes later, I see that she called me. Right. So right. I I'm wondering, did I send the message? Did she pick it up? Or, well, you know, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, that definitely has to do with alignment and synchronicity. And, and that's the cool thing about the ladder is the higher you climb on it, the more more great things like that, the more in sync with with things in the universe and in your life you become. And the more you can just you you just think of something and then it starts happening and then you you connect with things because, you, you know, you, when you're when you're up high on the ladder, your energy is flowing freely. You feel good. Um, things are things are really working out for you. All these seemingly miraculous things kind of stop pop, start popping up all over your life, mm. and you're also able to have clarity and able to, to see, um, you know, what's happening. And so you notice when you're in, not in those resistant states, that's when you can really sync up with those um, uh, those times when you think of someone and there they are, or uh, I, I have this amazing thing that happens to me in, in New York all the time is I'll watch something like a TV show or, uh, or um, you know, I'll be looking at a news article about someone and I'll start thinking about them and they'll show up in my life mm -hmm. the next day. It's, it's wow. happened to me 11 or 12 times. I was watching Game of Thrones and then I ended up meeting Peter Dinklage. Um, you know, it... it I was watching Damages, and then um, Glenn Close walked by me, and it, it, it just, you know, it, it's amazing. It, it's it can be really shocking sometimes, and that that's the great thing. When you feel really good, things are flowing to you, um, yeah. And you can have a lot of those incredible spiritual experiences and connected experiences for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I love when I notice it because uh, I really want to pay attention to it and say mm. thank you in a way because yeah. I know it is so magical. I know it's a gift yeah. when I experience synchronicities and when you focus more on them, they become more, more. and more right. as well. Right, exactly, so, exactly. Because and, those thoughts expand, yeah. So. Yeah, and that's the thing with this universe, you know. I, I believe in the more or what we put energy into is what comes back. Mm -hmm. And then that uh, that uh, is the same for the negative things too, which is right. kind of uh, com complicated. Uh, right. So you said you have had been depressed and I've been as well. And in that state, you know, that the last thing you want to do is think positively. It's the last right. thing you want to do. And when people well, because, see, right. say, feel grateful. I, that's it's what too I big don't of a feel. Jump. <laughs> you can never make it. It's because of the right. ladder. You can't, you can't, you know, I'd be trying to like jump a ladder a hundred feet. You know, it's, right. it's impossible jump. And it's just annoying. You know, yeah. it feels annoying when you, when you can't make it. It, it. And they're like, oh, just do this. And you're like, just do this. What do you mean just do this? And that's because they're on a different place in the ladder. And so it's easier for them to find that. Um, Can you talk a little bit about that, your journey and how you oh, yeah, actually of managed of course. to go this ladder? Um, <laughs> right, right. So um, when I was uh, 17, I moved to New York and I, I went to school here and I was in acting school. And one of my professors... Um, introduced me to personal development and at the time I didn't really like think uh, you know before I didn't really think much about it but it all of a sudden became very um, very pertinent to, to me so it, I became very ravenous about it and I started reading books 
um, you know, hundreds at this point. And I became like, uh, like a guinea pig. And I just tried to experiment every little thing I could find on myself. And it just kind of consumed my mind like, oh, wow, I didn't realize I can change myself so much that this is just such an open format and I can reprogram myself to, um, to have a much better life. And um, thousands of hours of audio later, uh, listening and applying, um, over the past 13 years, I, I became really good at it. And I started helping people. And I became really passionate about it because I would see people who are in a rough place and I can I could guide them on how it all works. And that's the great thing. It's universal. It's a universal thing, how our minds and how all this works. And once you have a taste for it, it's like uh, you can never forget it. it. It really, you'll always know why you have a negative thought. You always know how you can change or shift how you feel. And it really sets people free. And because I think joy is the most important thing in life. And what's, what's the, what can I do that's better in this world and to help influence people into a much happier state and to a better life? Uh, I think it's the best. So, yeah, I guess that's yeah. my journey. Yeah, thank you for sharing. Um, of course. Uh, I think it's interesting. I noticed in myself, uh, especially mm. a while ago, uh, and also with others, that there's an attraction to some darkness there's some attraction to some melancholy some mm -hmm. uh, just um being um sitting there longing for something and not being you know uh, feeling that everything is okay and looking mm -hmm. for what's wrong in my life instead of what's yeah. right in my life or what's right about me and right. I see that with others too that is like talking about everything that is actually wrong um, right right so so do you have any pres uh, so, or thoughts about why uh, we're so drawn to that well you know it's it's not so much that we're well okay we're, we're drawn to thought patterns that we already have. We're mm. drawn to belief systems that are already established. Mm. They're, most, they're most natural. It's like the most well-worn path for most of us. It doesn't have to be the case it, because the whole thing, it's, it's open. But, but us as a, as a world in general, we sort of focus on the negative. And so it's like we've worn a groove into those areas, into those directions. And you don't have to. It's it's you can wear a groove into feeling really good. It's just very few people in society do it, but I highly recommend it. Um, and uh, it, and it's something that I've done. And, and it all as you climb the ladder, it becomes more natural to be in different places, right? So 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 right now we kind of have different set points, different um, different uh, places we're most comfortable. We build up a lot of. Um, amplification on certain areas on the ladder on different subjects right and on different subjects we're in different places on the ladder right um, so we naturally just kind of go back to uh, we're, because we're we're attracted to where we already are what we've already kind of worn the path into right makes sense but we can we can change that and um, that, that's something, it's an analogy I use with my clients also. So for some people, a happy thought, right? If you can kind of think of it as like little synapses in the brain, right? A happy thought might be very new. Maybe it is to a lot of people. They haven't been up in a really good feeling state, so it might be very new. So if you have these two little synapses, you have your first little happy thought, and you just have this little tiny, tiny, tiny thing connecting them right in your brain, like these two cells together. Right. So it's so but it so easily snaps. Right. If you just if you don't really think about it again. But if you continue to think about it. Right. Then it becomes like a string. It's getting a little stronger. Right. It doesn't get pulled apart so much. So the happy thought is a little stronger, a little stronger. And then you have another happy thought. Right. A little stronger. Another happy thought. A little stronger. Another happy thought. A little stronger. You're creating new neural connections in your brain. And they've actually seen this. Um, there's been a lot of studies on this. That this is actually what's happening in our brains, too. So, and then you have another happy thought, a little stronger, a little stronger, right? Now all of a sudden it's kind of like yarn, it becomes quite strong. And so we're a little more attracted to it, but other things, they're like, the connection between the two things is like a giant metal wire, right? So you have to, 
you have to keep keep making it stronger and stronger by rethinking those thoughts, rethinking those thoughts, rethinking those positive thoughts, rethinking, and then all of a sudden the positive thought becomes stronger than the old negative belief system, and the old belief system starts crumbling away, and then the new thought you start becoming more attracted to that. But also it just feels better, you know. So this is really inspiring. Uh... And I, I can notice that too. And it's, it's you, uh, it's, it was so good that you mentioned that we're on different uh, places on the ladder um, mm -hmm. uh, concerning different areas, different in subjects, our lives, right? Subjects, and, yeah. And work, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that makes sense. Like for instance, you can be very happy about your career and everything, and right. believe, and, and then when it comes to love, it's like no, right. like I will never, right. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And that's that's super important. And I think a lot of people don't understand why they're attracting what on different subjects. And that's really why. Right. So. Right. So say someone yeah, around career is is feels amazing. But what's going to happen is because they're high up on the ladder on that subject, they're going to attract really positive things on that subject. Right. And then if they're not feeling so good about love, they're they're going to be completely blacked out to what could the possibilities could be or what good things to attract on that subject. But here's the thing, if you can shift that, and most people never do because they try to, again, make too big of a jump, right? So if they feel powerless in love, you, you, have, to, you have to just take it up a little bit at a time, a little mm -hmm. bit at a time. And, but eventually you can turn any subject into a blissful state. It just requires a certain mindset to do so. And you have to be patient and really honest with yourself on where you are and you just keep moving it up. But it's actually amazing because if you can take a subject and radically change the way you feel about it, it's like the whole world opens up on that subject. It's incredible. And I mm. definitely recommend that for everyone. That's what I do. Uh, that's what I try to do with my coaching. I, you guide them up just a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time, but, you know, it, the change you can make in 20 minutes of deliberate focus is uh, incredible. But we have ADD, and so we never, you know, right. quite make it. Yeah, because uh, in, um, in one way, I feel like, mm. wow, change a belief system that takes ages. And nowadays, no. I feel like people are saying, no, 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 things can happen much quicker. Yes. All of a sudden, you can just see. <laughs> so... I, I'm not sure with myself, I feel mm. like, it feels mm. like that some belief systems are just so deep down, but so deep I don't down, know yeah. if I, mm -hmm. that's a belief system that I believe that, you know? Right, right. That is true. <laughs> that is true. Well, it can be really deep. It can be really deep down. And I, I think there's just not a lot of tools for those things that are really deep down. Um, there's something I do with my clients called the Boulder process. And what we do is we take it, we really honestly feel how heavy it is and it can feel so heavy. It's like a planet. It's so dense. And what we do is we try to move it up. You just try to move it up and move it up. And it, it's so slow at the beginning. It's like, is it even moving at all? Mm. And, and so from, to move it just a little bit, it feels like just like an inch at the beginning. It takes a while, a little while, like several, you know, several minutes of deliberate focus and just to move it just the tiniest little bit. But then it starts moving more and then it starts moving faster and then it's a little bit faster and then a little bit faster. You feel lighter, you feel more flow, more energy flow, and uh, you really can do it. But yeah, there's really not a lot of tools that can do it, but it's definitely possible. I do it with people all the time. Um, a friend of mine, um, uh, one of my clients, they, uh, they always had a problem with their body. And um, before you knew it, we, we had changed the way they felt about it so radically. And they really haven't had a lot of negative thoughts about their body since. And uh, a couple months later, they basically have like a six pack. It's, it's incredible. Because, uh, because the, the higher you get on the, on the ladder on a certain thing, the less effort things take. All of a sudden, you want to go to the gym, it, and that's, mm. you know, that that's what's interesting about it. It costs less effort. All mm. of a sudden, I, I was just thinking about my uh, own uh, 
uh, thinking <laughs> um, yeah. that I've noticed that there is this subject that really brings me down. Mm. And sometimes it's like I can feel it here, but I'm like, mm. okay, I know it's there, but I'm not going into it. And sometimes right. I just, I can't not go right. into it. And then right. it's like I'm wearing the thought in a way and then it crawls mm. in and all of a sudden I'm right in that problem, problem, problem. That, uh, that's right. But then uh, I can wake up in the morning and it's not there. And I can think that's about right. it again. Oh, no. That's <laughs> right. And that's right. Yes. It's that's so... exactly right. And we're, we're all like that. And it, it totally makes sense because on that subject, the ladder right, it's low. So, yeah. So that, that's a beautiful thing. Also, when, the, when you think about a thought too much, sometimes you get these runaway train situations. Uh, we all get them. Um, that just means you allowed it to grow too much. If you dropped it within the first 10 seconds, it wouldn't. It, it wouldn't take over. But, you know, sometimes you're not really paying attention to what yeah. we're thinking about. It happens to everybody. It's a, it's a thing we're all getting better with. Um, but, but I want yeah. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. But first thing in the morning, you're always clean. And so if you can change, if you can. So what I do and one of the best things I've done is I don't let myself, my feet hit the floor. And so I have a giant smile on my face. Oh. <laughs> and it really sets up the energy for the day, um, how you feel for the day, because you've already got some, some, uh, some power going in that direction. And, and once you have more power going in that direction, it's kind of hard to, to get off of it. So if you started strongly in a positive direction, it takes much more to get it to go back to that negative place. Um, I'm yeah. going to throw something in here. <laughs> please, please. Uh, yeah. I, I'm very, uh, or I'm quite aware in my dream world. So I feel mm -hmm. that I'm very affected or influenced by my dreams. So mm -hmm. the way I wake up in the morning often has to do with how I felt in the dream. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> What I did. Right. But I'm thinking there as well, you know. So, right. Uh, right. yeah. Uh, but I also wanted to mention that um, my teacher, I have a teacher, I go to this school, uh, this self-development mm -hmm. school. And uh, with this topic that I was talking about, she meant that I needed to uh, look at um, the pain. And I think mm -hmm. there is a lot of wisdom in pain if you like mm -hmm. learn from the wisdom. Right. Uh, so I really did that and I want to share that. I really yeah. went into the pain. Because um, I think that I had been pushing it down and I got down, you know, sometimes, but then I pulled myself up and pulled myself up. I didn't address that issue. Mm -hmm. And then I did that one evening and it just felt, felt like my whole world was collapsing. It felt like I mm -hmm. was collapsing. It felt like I was going to die. Mm -hmm. uh, it, uh, and afterwards I thought about this. Maybe this is the dark night of the soul or something similar. Maybe mm -hmm. this is what they're talking about because mm -hmm. it was all of a sudden so dark. And then it uh, lightened up after a few hours. And then when I mm -hmm. woke up next morning, mm -hmm. I was light as a feather. Mm -hmm. It was so strange. Like I woke up and I, I could sing like morning rising is something. No. <laughs> right. Uh, the, the whole energy was completely different. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I, I, my, my point was perhaps that I took that big problem or that thought and I really mm -hmm. delved into it and mm -hmm. I kind of released something. Yeah, uh, well, there's several things that can happen um, too. It, and, it, and that's, that's the thing. When we try to keep pushing stuff down, it, it never works, right? It, it, just, it, it just ends up kind of spurting out in other ways. Um, so yeah, I think it's really important to always feel your emotions and to, yeah, receive that message because that, that pain is there telling you something. Um, now, uh, what also can happen is sometimes you completely, you know, sometimes we completely avoid a subject and if we were to put ourselves into it, um, we can move it up just by being there for a few hours. And so, um, It, it kind of just naturally comes up because it's such a low place, but our natural set point is higher than that. That'll kind of, it, it, over over a course of hours, it can sort of move in the right direction. So, um, but the but you don't want to keep dwelling in it because you know it can it can kind of consume consume things. But yeah, I think you should always uh, receive pain. 
pain is always there telling you something. And when you receive it, it typically doesn't hurt anymore. Um, and so you know, it's always a really good thing. Right. Uh, I mean, people say that when you see it, uh, it goes away. Like my experience yeah. is that it doesn't go away immediately. Mm -hmm. um, right. Uh, I think you, uh, I, to me, I think you have to see it, really acknowledge it. And uh, mm. uh, you don't have to figure out what it is about. Uh, sometimes that can be good too. Uh, you know, go to therapy and really dive into it if it's heavy things. Uh, but mm. I think uh, feeling, truly feeling the emotion. I, I remember one time I sat down and I felt... Uh, um, rejection <laughs> I mm -hmm. went into rejection and it started getting bigger and bigger and bigger and uh, it was burning on my chest all of a sudden and I was like oh my goodness and I just sat in it and sat in it and when it uh, dissipated uh, I felt so light and after that I've noticed that I don't have this big issue with rejection anymore Mm -hmm. So I think I really met that feeling, but you're so right. We shouldn't dwell on it. And that's, mm -hmm. I think, the, the, uh, the challenge in a way to find that balance. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, yeah. Um, you want to, the balance, the balance, that's the thing. Things will naturally come up. And so if you continually just focus 100% toward the positive, the things that need to be addressed will just show up on their own. So, right. so you don't have to go chasing after them. Right. <laughs> you know, most of the time, if you're, if you're really up to speed, because things, you know, things are always coming in. And if you can deal with them right then, you, you don't have to deal with them later. Um, but a lot of times we kind of have let things go for a while. So... So a lot of people have, you know, a thing with, with rejection they haven't really dealt with. Um, and uh, so, so for instance, something, something that I did, I was, I was dating someone at the time and I was insecure, quite a bit insecure around them. And, you know, this person made uh, uh, 10 times more money than me and they were, um, you know, they had a lot, a lot going on at the time. And uh, I didn't feel as adequate or I felt like a bit of an imposter. But I realized that I, it was just my own insecurity and I knew that and it made me see things in a skewed way. The insecurity skews the, your vision for it. So I sat down and I deliberately moved the way I felt about that subject into a better and better feeling place. And it took me probably about a half hour and I felt a tremendous amount of release from it. And I mean, a lot of, of course, a lot of emotions came up during it, but you, you have to let those uh, powerful emotions come up and, and, and to keep moving them into a better and better feeling place. And I was able to do this and move it into even a blissful place, the subject of um, how I felt or how confident I felt around this person. And, you know, I never felt insecure around this person ever again. And I thought, wow, this is really cool. You know, we're really on to something here. Yeah. Um, and we, we all can do that. And I think, and we can do that on any subject. And we can do it about our body. We can do it about our relationships. We can do it about um, our career or, you know, money mm -hmm. or whatever. And we can feel, we can find that confidence. It, confidence and, because confidence is like a knowing. It's a positive expectation that things are going to go the way you want it to. Right. And that's pretty high up in the good feelings. So if you can take a subject and move it up there and then spend some time there making it stronger, you have to spend time to grow it at that higher place. Um, you can really change anything in your life. And I, it's it's really cool, really fun. Yes. And you have experienced that. That is why, yeah. you know, it's so inspiring to hear about. Yeah, and course. I was just thinking allowance, you know, when you allow mm -hmm. and choose like yes. those together that we do have, we are co-creators, but yes. also allowing what is, I think there's something there. Of mm -hmm. course, of course. Oh, oh, of course. Um, well, that's the thing. When you feel when you feel better, aren't you allowing more? When when you don't feel good, aren't you kind of like holding on to things? Right, right. There's a connection. There's a connection yeah. there. And the better you feel, the more flexible you are, the more relaxed yeah. you feel. 
um, the more you can just allow. Yeah. So, so last question, because you say yeah. that little do people know of the actual mechanisms uh, of ta- of true change in life. And I was thinking, right. is this it? <laughs> it it is it is because if you can shift if you can radically shift the emotion you can radically shift anything and uh, a lot of people don't don't realize that because you if you can shift the emotion the thoughts will completely change it's it's like it's like the ideas aren't even there they're right in front of you but you can't even see them you're blind to them until until you move into an emotional state where that is is allowed. Because right now we have thousands of things coming in that we're we're experiencing, right? We can we're hearing things, we're looking at things, and we're only able to actually notice a few of them per second, right? A handful. Right? The reticular activating system in our, our brain. And so if we change the emotion around a subject, all of a sudden we can start picking up completely different things in our environment, in our mind that we can think of. They're completely blacked out before. And we all of a sudden are able to uncover them and they open up and they become um, visible to us. And uh, that's that's really where, where the change happens. All of a sudden, it's like those people who like going to the gym. How how are how are they like that? What makes them the people that want to go? And I know for me for a long time it was like it took so much effort to go just once. It was so hard, you know, to go. Why? But why was it? It's because I had it in a low state, and so it takes so much effort to allow that to to flow. But you move it, you move it, and everything becomes easy you want to go it's something you're passionate about you're like oh you know it'd be great let's go to the gym yeah. all of a sudden and you can do that on any subject i mean this is true empowerment this is true self-empowerment yeah. and that's, that's right. why i keep saying we're so much more powerful than we are you know we have not even believe. scratched the surface yeah. oh yeah not even close and that's the good news you know that is. is good news that to know that we're always more when we think, you know, I can't go higher now or this is it. No, it's always no, more. Always it's more, unlimited. Always more. It's unlimited. Yes. Yep. You just keep going. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Oh, thank you so much, Sakurai. I can't wait yeah. for your book. I can't wait. Uh, to thank you. Read more articles and watch more of your uh, YouTube videos and Instagram. You're wow. You're oh, working you a so lot much. all over the place. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. So thank, thank you. you I was so, so excited to be here. Yeah, thank you for so much for having me. And thank you. And thank you so much yeah. for watching, everybody. And remember to subscribe to both our YouTube channels if you haven't before. Much oh, love yeah. from Oslo and the US. Bye bye. Yeah.